got an extra copy of that? I got several. I just need one. Thanks, sir. Well, I'm going to come in that door, and I'm going to go out that door. Yes. Boat, so it'll, uh, I'll be watching for it.
Please be seated. I'd like to welcome you to the service today. The family thanks you for being here and thank you for your words of encouragement and prayers. Continue to pray for Afton and the family. As uh, It's always a great loss when you lose your wife and a mom and a grandma and a great-grandma. But it's also a blessing that we know where she is. We know she's home with Jesus, and, and that's what gets us up and keeps us going each day. So we're thankful for that. May 16th, 1935 was a special day. That was the day that God blessed each of us here with an amazing woman named Rita Bickley. And she was born in her home in Wil on Wilcoxon Street. So I think that is, that is really a neat thing that we don't get to see anymore. But that's neat. she was born right here in Farmersville, a lifelong resident. And she went home to be with the Lord. She passed away peacefully in her sleep on October 10th of 2020 in Princeton, Texas. And after I knew she was smart because she said yes to marry you, but I also she was the salutatorian of her class of 1953. So she's really, really smart. And she, after high school, she went to Texas Women's University and got her degree in mathematics, bachelor of science degree in mathematics. Then May the 31st, 1958 was the beautiful day that she married you, Mr. Afton. And what a beautiful marriage y'all have had. What a beautiful example of a lifelong marriage and being committed to your spouse till only death separates. And I love how y'all have loved each other through all of this. And just you've set such a good example for so many of us. 62 years, you don't see it anymore. So I am thankful, Afton, for you and Rita so, so much. After they got married, they traveled extensively because... Afton was in the Air Force, career Air Force, and they lived in Georgia, Mississippi, the great state of Texas, Nebraska, Okinawa, and California before Afton retired and they came home back here to Farmersville in 1972. Rita was a stay-at-home mom. She was a devoted wife and mother. She loved her two boys, four grandchildren, and blessed with five great-grandchildren. She loved spending time with each of them. She was always eager to play games, make crafts, and take them on adventures. I'm sure you all had quite a few adventures through the years. She was a lifelong member of our church right here at First Baptist Church Farmersville. She served many years as a Sunday school teacher to adult ladies class. And one of the things I always remember seeing a lot about Rita was her, she was a founding member of the Farmersville Historical Society. And she was president many, many years. She did so much to preserve the history of this town and promote it in such a great job. She loved our town and she spent so much of her time preserving this history through the creation of the historical monuments, restoration of the Bain Honecker House, printing yearly calendars full of old pictures and sweet, sweet stories of Farmersville. Another thing anyone knew, Rita knew that she had a great love for animals. And I would say rescuing animals, not just loving them, but she rescued a lot of animals. She, she brought a lot of animals back to life. Birds, baby birds, bunnies, possums, raccoons, and who knows what else she saved through the years. Dogs, cats, birds were always part of her home. And that's a, a fun thing to remember. She was a talented artist and she spent many, many hours painting beautiful flowers, landscape, cattle, and anything else that caught her eye. She survived by her husband, Afton, of 62 years, her two sons, Ken and Robert, and their wives, Robin and Rose, four grandchildren, Melanie Cottongame, Brian Roos, Rebecca Fanning, and Kristen Roos, five great-grandchildren, Riley and Levi Cottongame, Charlotte and Lauren Roos and Judah Roos. Rita had a life that was well lived. She was a beautiful example of a godly woman, godly wife, and someone that loved Jesus and loved people, and she did so much for her church couple of things I wanted to add for my personal time that I've, I've been here 24 years so I've known Afton and Rita the whole time I've been here. One great memory I remember seeing Rita so many years sitting right here doing sign language for Agatha. Her and my wife and a couple other ladies 
did this for years, and what a blessing it was. And I, I remember sometimes, look, I usually sit over here and watch her do sign language, and, you know, Bart has been known sometimes to use some really big words. And seeing Rita turn around and look at him, like, what? <laughs> How am I supposed to translate that one? <laughs> Can you break it down in simpler words? But she was such a servant, and, and that was such a big ministry for Agatha. But I, I just still, I was thinking the last couple of days, I was thinking I'd see her head turn around and see her do that. It was just a fun memory for me to think about. But what a blessing that was to Agatha and her family. And we all loved Agatha. We got to take her home ourselves. And, and she would go eat with her to Dairy Queen and do so many things. And so it really is a special time. And then even before I got here, and it continued on in my time here, Afton and Rita loved children, loved helping people, you know, helping picking up children for church and VBS and all the many things they did. But they have helped so many high school graduates go to college. Before I got here and since I've been here, they helped give scholarships every year to college graduates. And it was in honor of Rita's, mom, Rita's dad, J.D. Bickley, the J.D. Bickley family and Afton Rita. Every year since I've been here, we give a scholarship away. Sometimes we're able to give a couple of scholarships away to help so many people get college degrees and better their life, and that's what they want. They wanted them to get a degree and do better for their family. And that has always been a huge blessing for me that I got to be a part of that. Afton and I would always, we'd meet, well, who do you think's best this year? And we'd, we'd talk about who the graduates were, and then we would give them, get to give people scholarships. So Reed and Afton have helped so many people. And, and Rita knows now that she's in heaven, all the many, many people that she has helped and made a difference for. And, and we all look forward to that day to join her in heaven. A scripture that I picked out to read today is one that's personal to me. I read this at my mother and father's funeral. And, and when I think of Rita, it's, it's just a scripture of so much comfort. And you, you read it all your life. But when you lose someone really close to you, it means a whole, whole lot more. And especially the last verse. But I'm going to read Psalm 23. And it just is a very special in my life. And... and Rita and Afton were very, very special in my life. Psalm 23 says this, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And the best part is it the last, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And we know that's where Rita is. She's home with Jesus in a day that we as followers of Christ all look forward to. Will you pray with me, please? Father, we thank you so much for Rita Bickley Roos. What a blessing she was in my life, my wife, and so many others right here in Farmersville. She's had such an impact on so many people. And as Afton said, a life well lived. Rita lived her wife life well. She honored you. She honored her husband, her children. She lived well, Father, and I thank you for her trust in you as her Lord and Savior. And we know, as your scripture tells us, your word tells us to be absent of the body is to be present with the Lord. We know she's home with you. And God, we just look forward to the day that we get to join her in heaven and be with you and be in your presence forever and ever and ever. God, I pray for your Holy Spirit to pour out comfort for Afton and, and the family at this time. And, and God, just give them the peace that only you can. And God, we just look forward to the day we get to be with you. God, I pray your blessings on this service. In Jesus' name, amen. Y'all have to pardon me for taking a second to figure out it was my turn to come up here. Uh, I don't always lead the singing in funerals. 
Uh, but I'm doing that today because Brother James is uh, out in uh, uh, other, he's out of town, and so wasn't able to be here this morning. So uh, I'm going to ask you uh, to sing with me, and I think it would feel good to you if you stood, if you're able. And we're going to sing a beautiful old hymn. The words are going to be up on the screen, uh, talking about how the Lord leads us through every bit of our life. That psalm just talked about that. And now this song is going to talk about that as well. He leadeth me, O oh blessed God. He leadeth me, O oh blessed God, O oh words with heavenly comfort fraught. What I do? Please be seated. The poem I will be reading was actually chosen by my grandmother to be read at her father's funeral. Crossing the Bar by Alfred Lord Tennyson. Sunset and evening star and one clear call for me. And may there be no moaning of the bar when I put out to sea. But such a tide as moving seems asleep, too full for sound and foam, when, with, when that which drew from out the boundless deep turns again home. Twilight and evening bell, and after that the dark, and may there be no sadness of farewell when I embark. For though from out our boat born of time and place, the flood may bear me far, I hope to see my pilot face to face when I have crossed the bar.
Hello. I promised uh, Pastor Bart that I wouldn't speak for too long. Preaching is his role today and not mine. Um, but I did just want to say a couple of words before I um, sing this song today. And I think um, even as I was writing this song, those of you that know my dad know that he's a very prolific songwriter, but that's not something that I've really come to. It's something I've, I've looked for and wanted to do for a while, but um, just hadn't really followed in his footsteps in that way yet. But the word that I was thinking as this, this song kind of came to me in the last couple of weeks, um, even before my grandmother passed, was just this word of the Lord gives us what we need when we need it. And uh, so the song I'm going to sing today is actually the first song I've written through and put together and I'm going to sing today. Um, but I just think about the way that the Lord gave me this song um, in the quiet, in nature, just having some time to, to process and to think about my grandmother and to think about what she's meant to so many people and to our family and to me. And it, it came so easily, this song. <laughs> um, it came to me in a day, um, which really surprised me, but I thought that was so sweet. And, and the title, it's actually a funny story. I, I remember being in this church when we were here for my great-grandmother's funeral, for Rita's mother. And my dad had wrote a song for that occasion. Um, but I was too young then to remember that the title of the song that my dad wrote um, for my great-grandmother is the same song that is the same song title that the Lord gave me for this song. And I thought that was kind of a really sweet blessing um, from the Lord that I didn't know. Um, so today, we're going to be singing... Uh, not the same song, but the same title that was sung for her mother's funeral, um, and it's called We Will Remember. And oh, 
the beauty you share I will remember each person that you cared for well tending your mother at her home minding your sister and her husband were never alone raising two boys into godly men faithfully living 60 years alongside one man and oh And oh, 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 and oh, the love you fulfilled. It was your care so pure. so tender it was your spirit for life your spirit of joy that we have loved so dearly and that will be missed by so many but Finally home It was your care so pure It was your heart so tender It was your spirit for life your spirit of joy that we have loved so dearly and that will be missed by so many but we sing praise our God today we You're finally home. We will remember. We will remember. We will remember. finally Well, it's a room full of roosters today, 
and uh, a legacy to the uh, love and faithfulness of a couple who have made an impact in a lot of areas. Uh, there's no doubt about that uh, from the way that, uh, that really Rita served her country when Afton served his country uh, by uh, following him around to military bases and, uh, and helping him to do the things that he did uh, by the ways that uh, she has uh, served her community uh, that have already been mentioned. Uh, her involvement in the, uh, uh, in the historical society. Uh, if you use a Google image search and search for Rita Ruth, you find up the, what serves up are pictures of school grades going to the Bain Honaker house uh, to visit the Bain Honaker house uh, because those are the those are the pictures that are on the newspaper articles that covered the times that people went there and listed Rita's name as one of the people who would help her, who would help with that. Uh, we always at Old Time Saturday we made sure to take our kids to the Bain Honaker house, and uh, that's because uh, Rita and some of the other ladies that we knew who were involved in that always said you got to bring the kids to the Bain Honaker house, and so we always would, uh, and they would always think. Uh, I'm going to throw them under the bus here a little bit. Uh, they would always think, Jim and Sarah, that they didn't want to leave the bounce houses or the uh, pony rides or whatever else to go into the Bain Honaker house. But whenever they got in there, there was food uh, that they were always selling off as a part of that. And uh, usually it was kind of food that they liked. And so they were always delighted. And they also, also got a lot of attention uh, from the ladies who were there. And so it's always something that blessed them. I know, and I, and I haven't started to list even all of it, I, I, know that, uh, I know that Rita made a big impact in those areas of the community. And uh, people will be talking about that for a long time, and she'll be remembered in that way. Uh, I'm going to brush all of that to the side for a minute, because it seems appropriate that the thing that I should do is to take just a minute to talk about what she's meant to this church. I don't know why I'm getting choked up <laughs> doing this. I do this all the time. Uh, to talk about what she's meant to this church. And um, it seemed to me that maybe an appropriate way to do that would be to preach today a funeral message from a passage that I don't think I've ever used before. Uh, I don't always remember everything, but I think a passage maybe I've never used before as a funeral text. And that is... Uh, from 1 Timothy chapter 3, uh, particularly verse 11, but I'm going to read starting in verse 8 from 1 Timothy 3. Deacons likewise must be dignified, not double-tongued, not addicted to much wine, not greedy for dishonest gain. They must hold the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience and let them also be tested first then let them serve as deacons if they prove themselves blameless. Now here's verse 11. Their wives likewise must be dignified, not slanderers, but sober-minded, faithful in all things. Verse 12, let deacons each be the husband of one wife, managing their children and their own households well. For those who serve well as deacons gain a good standing for themselves and also great confidence in the faith that is in Christ Jesus. Uh, I want to pay particular attention to that sentence that talks about the wife of the deacon uh, because uh, it's, it's not a position uh, in a church that really has any defined job responsibilities. Um, it's not a position in a church uh, that receives uh, normally like a listing on the website or anything like, here are the deacon's wives, we want you to know who they are. Um, but it is a position that can make or break a church based upon whether it is done well or done poorly. Can make it or break a church. I want to take a look at the things that it says in here that a deacon's wife needs to be. It says, first of all, deacon's wife, likewise, must be dignified. Now, what this means, it, it, uh, dignity is something that God gives all of us. We're created in God's image. That creates for us a certain amount of dignity that pertains to being human. And respect is something that 
people choose to give to you or not to give to you. People can disrespect you. People can give you respect. Uh, and what this word means is whatever respect you get from people, you tend to deserve it. Uh, we, all, we all give respect to people, I suspect, if you're a good person at all, you give respect to some people who may not have earned it that well. Uh, there's probably at some point in your lifetime been uh, a president or a governor or a somebody along the way that you really didn't care for too much, that you didn't vote for, that you didn't want them to be in that office at that time. And yet a lot of people, I think this is a good thing, will show respect. I try to. will show respect to the office of governor, respect to the office of president, respect to a police officer who stops you or whatever else. And in the same way, I can tell you that people sometimes show respect to me as a pastor, whether I deserve it or not. Uh, it's something that they do out of uh, a sense of uh, weightiness that they place upon the office. And in the same way, those who serve as deacons and those who serve as deacons' wives will receive uh, a level of respect. And what this is saying is that the deacon's wife should be someone whose character and way of living is a way of living that deserves the respect that's given to them. And um, Afton and Rita have been respected by this congregation for 21 years that I can attest to, and I think before that as well. Um, it's something that that respect is shown uh, in, uh, in the fact that uh, that. Uh, whether he feels good about the choice or not, Afton was on the committee that recommended me to come here. So when our church was looking for a pastor, uh, this family is a family that the church thought of to say, here's someone that we want to entrust to, to that task. And I think it's shown also in the ways that, uh, that, that Rita was trusted uh, in our church as well as in the community for positions of responsibility that we'll talk about more here in a little bit. Um, you know, Dignity, being dignified, is not something that comes with having money. Being dignified is not something that comes with having achieved a great education. I think we've all known wealthy people who went to fancy colleges who don't act in a dignified way at all. And we've also all known people who lived in simple circumstances and had modest, modest means, but carried themselves in a way that revealed their character. And I think Rita is one of those people. Uh, I think she exemplified what it means to be dignified. It says that the deacon's wife must not be a slanderer. Uh, you know, the word there is actually the word for devil, because the Bible says that the devil's an accuser. Uh, and so the slanderer is someone who goes around saying bad things about people that aren't true. And uh, you encounter that in life, right? All of us have encountered somebody at some point or another who went around and talked about you. If not, then you didn't finish middle school. Uh, but, if you, but if you made it that far in your life, you had somebody go around somewhere and talk bad about you. And uh, I think we've all experienced that. And we've all known that person who was good at it <laughs> and who had a lot of practice uh, at doing this sort of thing. And I've got to tell you, occasionally it happens at a church that someone like that winds up being a deacon's wife or a, or a pastor's wife or even a deacon or a pastor sometimes who engages in that sort of thing. And I said a while ago that that the way people live out the role of being a deacon's wife can make or break a church. And this is one of those places. If you get somebody who's vindictive, if you get somebody who is divisive, and they wind up in a role of influence in a church, many, many, many are the churches that have been torn asunder by the difficulty that comes from the wrong person being in that role. Well, if Rita had a bone in her body that was like that, I never encountered it. Uh, I, 
I don't know what she might have said to you about me, but I can tell you she never said anything to me about any of you that was negative or bad or, or derisive in any way whatsoever. She's witty and able to have a good time and able to do that without, without being negative and critical about other people. And so very thankful for that about her. It says that the deacon's wife must be someone who is sober-minded. In, in other words, what this, it doesn't mean somebody who can't smile. It means someone who's able to get serious about serious things. Life has fun things. Life has serious things. And there are people who never say, all right, let's get serious about serious business and take care of matters at hand. But Rita was not one of those people. I feel like I'm uh, eating way into my time, and so I'm not going to belabor that because I think we all know that, that Rita was someone who... Well, she wouldn't have accomplished all the things she's accomplished if she couldn't get serious about getting some things done. I saw that, you saw that. It's part of the way that she lived her life. It says here that they need to be faithful in all things. Now, I, I gave short attention to the idea of the sober-mindedness of Rita because I didn't want to eat up time that I wanted to spend here to talk about Rita's enduring faithfulness. I suspect she's not the only person who ever thought we ought to pay some attention to Farmersville's history if we want to, again, go outside the church a little bit. But a lot of people who would think of doing something like that would not faithfully see the project through. But Rita was the kind of person who would faithfully see it through. We benefited so much from that here at church. Uh, you, it's part of the experience, and you're thankful to have folks for the time that you have them who kind of pop into church and then pop out of church and pop into church and then pop out of church. But you're thankful for people in leadership, deacons and deacons' wives and Sunday school teachers and folks like that. You're, you're thankful for people like that who, in the good days of the church and the bad days of the church, in the prosperous times and the hungry times, in the peaceful and calm moments and the tumultuous moments, when they like what's happening and when they don't like what's happening, stand faithfully there all the way through to the end. And Afton and Rita Roos have been that all the way through. I think it's fair to say that if we were going to measure the equation one way or the other, Rita was more faithful to the church than I always was to her. Uh, it's hard when you get to the point where uh, they, I, last time I saw Afton and Rita was, uh, was in their uh, room over at the villa when they were in there together about uh, 21 BP, uh, 21 days before the pandemic, I think it was, <laughs> somewhere around in there. And then, uh, you know, we had deacons who were visiting uh, them to check on them, uh, going by and visiting them, and then suddenly they shut everything down. And it's been months since any of us have been able to even go over and, and see her. And yet Rita has had an ongoing and enduring faithfulness over the course of her life. Uh, to this church. Faithfulness as a Sunday school teacher. You know, we have people sometimes who say, well, I, you know, I'd like to try teaching a Sunday school class for a year, and I'm thankful for, we wouldn't make it without people who said, hey, I'd like to teach a Sunday school class for a year. Uh, people who say, I, well, you know, I'm willing, to, I'm willing to pitch in. If the teacher's sick, I'll come and, and do a week or two or something like that. And I'm thankful for that because when we have a teacher who's sick or out of pocket, if we don't have somebody who can step in, we're in trouble. But, but when you have somebody like Rita who makes basically a lifetime commitment to a Sunday school class to say, this is my Sunday school class, these are my ladies, and as long as God gives me strength, I will be here. Folks, 
churches survive and thrive on the basis of that. That is what carries things forward. We aren't the only ones who benefited from Rita's faithfulness. Certainly our church did over the course of many decades. But I know, and we've touched on the ways that her community benefited from her faithfulness. I know that her family, uh, her grandchildren and great-grandchildren and children, and I know, that, I know that you guys benefited from her faithfulness in all things down through the years. Uh, I know that her husband benefited from her faithfulness down through the years. Even a paraplegic opossum or two uh, down through the years benefited from her unrelenting faithfulness. So we hear the story about uh, the first time Robin came home to meet the Ruses and, uh, uh, and, and Rita was on the porch to greet them and they went in and Afton was in there in his seat and then uh, uh, Rita uh, had found an opossum that the cat had dragged up and had destroyed its rear legs and Rita was determined to get it better and uh, in fact she would draw up water in the bathtub and attempt hydrotherapy with the uh, possum to see if a little buoyancy would get it to where it could bring those back legs along and be able to move again and and so Robin walks in and Afton's there and then here comes a, uh, a half-paralyzed opossum dragging itself by its front feet out across the, uh, across the living room. And that was her introduction uh, to the Roos family. And uh, uh, that's a funny story. Uh, uh, it, uh, it, it, it strangely warms the heart of an Arkansan uh, to, to hear a story like that, I'll say. Um, and, uh, and yet... Funny as that is, isn't that exemplary of the very thing that I'm talking about? Rita, busy with a thousand other things, would not give up on the recovery of a possum. She faithfully pursued that as far as she could. So, I can't take any credit for it, because I wasn't anywhere around but I think this church knew what it was doing when it made Afton a deacon and brought Rita on as a deacon's wife. Somebody, somewhere, at some point, ought to take a moment to say, thank you for the service you gave to the Lord, for the ministry you poured out into this church, well done, good and faithful servant. Will you pray with me? Father, we're thankful to you that all the faithfulness that comes through us is given to us by you. Thank you that Rita invested herself the way she did because of what you did in her heart through the gospel. And uh, I know, Lord, that, uh, that she has spoken of you many, many times and has spoken to you many, many times. But she who saw through a glass darkly now sees you face to face. And in that, we rejoice and find great comfort. We thank you, Lord, that the mark you made on her life was an indelible one. Something that even late, when disease had taken its toll in so many ways upon her mind and her thinking, all of these things, her dignity, her, her kindness and lack of slander toward others, her sober-mindedness, her faithfulness in all things, remained undimmed all the way through to the end. That's you. Thank you, Lord, that you made that of her. Make that of us too, will you? By the work of the Spirit through the gospel. 
Help us to go and do likewise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to sing the hymn, It Is Well With My Soul. I'm going to invite you to stand. I just think you sing better when you're standing. I'm going to invite you to stand as we sing this beautiful hymn.
As Linda continues to play, uh, I failed to mention earlier, but need to. We do want to invite you as you're leaving, as you're escorted out to pass by the casket, but we put up the line here because just uh, out of respect for the family and to prevent the transmission of any kind of bug that we might be carrying through, I'd ask you to wave or give your respects to the family or even maybe without being able to give them a hug or shake a hand today, send them an odor card in three or four days or a couple of weeks or something like that, which could really make a big, big impact, probably more than your handshake today could. Uh, so we'd ask you to respect that, please, as we process through at the conclusion of the service. Thank you.